Hey, welcome back. It's Chuck Charlton here with the Charlton Advantage team at Royal Page. And uh, every year we go to this, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation's housing outlook for the upcoming year. And then we try and just digest and, and sort of compress down the key messages from that presentation. Probably 300 slides. We move it down to about 25 or 30 that we thought were really interesting and also helpful for you as you plan for the upcoming year. Uh, it's all prediction stuff. It's all crystal ball. So we might find that the, the predictions are way off but what we do know is today and in the past, and we try and use that to figure out where we're going. So it seems like Europe's economic engine is in part, meaning it's not going to get much better. It's not probably not going to get much worse. As we look to Asia, we're probably looking at still something in drive, but decelerating. And what we're starting to see, what they believe is that the North American economy is in neutral for now, and it's probably going to shift into drive a little bit later on. We can start to see signs of recovery in the U.S. The big question mark as I make this video at the end of December 2012, that fiscal cliff, what's going to happen with that? We'll talk a bit more about that in a sec. Uh, Consumer-driven U.S. economy, we're starting to see that consumption is going up in the U.S. and we can start to see that even employment, GDP is starting to head up. So it looks like the U.S. is on the brink of something good if they can figure out this fiscal cliff stuff. Um, and you can see it really is holding back small business. You can see 51% of the people uh, who run small businesses, the reasons why they're not expanding or hiring is because there's concerns over that. If that's eliminated and what the CMHC believes, and I tend to believe it too, is there's going to be some kind of compromise made or they're going to extend the deadlines on the tax cuts uh, further. So let's see what happens. It could be way off. You can you have this video as proof that I don't really know what's going to happen. Political uncertainties, 27%. That's been fixed because this was taken just before the U.S. election. So four more years of Obama. Uh, here's the other thing that's happening is the lower re resale supply in the U.S., meaning the, the choice that consumers have. That if, if listings stopped coming out tomorrow, how long would it take for that supply to get eaten up is really what this measure is. So it's back down between four and six months, which is a pretty healthy place to be. You can see at the uh, the lowest times, it was probably closer to 12 months of supply. And the U.S. consumer obviously affects us. We know this, but here's an interesting status that 75% of our exports actually go to the U.S. So for Canada, we're making a lot of the stuff that they're consuming. So that's actually having an effect on the Ontario manufacturing. We're actually seeing that the global manufacturing trend is down. Ontario is actually on the way up. And so we can see that U.S. vehicle demand is starting to really come back. And uh, that could be one of those canary in a coal mine effects that can really indicate that there's something going on. Good news for Southern Ontario or even Southwest Ontario more specifically. Toronto, right in the central region, it's very, it's a diverse economy, which is good, but it's not as, as subject to the highs and lows. So North and Southwest, so Southwest is manufacturing, traditionally North is commodities. And you can look that North is still benefiting from high commodity prices. You can see that that is a good thing for Sudbury, North Bay, all those kind of communities. Western Canada is really leading growth. A lot of that has to do with the oil and gas industry. Uh, and you can see Ontario, Quebec is sort of right in the middle. And uh, and then Newfoundland is sort of off to the side there. We are losing workers to the West. So if you think about supply and demand, people go where the jobs go. And so we might find that there might be a little less demand in Ontario for housing. Population growth, this is a huge thing. We talked about it in last year's video. You can see 19% of people over the age of 45. So you can see 16% increase over 65. So it's an aging population that's putting a lot of stress on social programs. So as we look at pensions, we look at healthcare, there's going to be a lot of pressure on there. So it's important to speak to a financial planner about how to protect yourself against that stuff. Because I think it's one of the biggest issues affecting us that nobody even talks about. It's not in the newspapers, but I think it's going to be a huge issue moving forward. But even look at that from a housing perspective is 51% of households are now two people or less. That's an aging population. It's also the high rate of divorce. 
But that is obviously playing into the kinds of homes that, that builders are making. So it's important to look, where's the demand if you're going to be investing in real estate? One person households grew 14% in the last five years. That's pretty su substantial. One person households, not a lot of space required. Um, I thought it was interesting when people look at Toronto condos. How do they compare? They're actually right around Sydney prices, nowhere near London, Paris, Hong Kong. And and uh, it's it's just interesting because people think the Toronto condos, six, seven hundred square uh, dollars a square foot is high, but it's really actually quite in line with a lot of the other uh, cities in the world that, that I guess compare to Toronto population per square kilometer. We're actually a lot like Sydney. Uh, income to price ratio. So this is affordability. So actually the higher this bar goes, the more affordable it is. And uh, you can see London is probably the least affordable. And you can see where New York is. That tends to be the one that we always compare it to. Here's an issue though. We're really getting into affordability troubles. And you know that the average Canadian owes a dollar sixty-four for every dollar they make, which includes their mortgage, but it's still a pretty scary stat. So the required income to buy as a share of actual income is higher than 100% in Toronto. Not sustainable. Obviously, it's good news for condos because generally the condos tend to be on a lower price scale, although with condo fees, sometimes you wonder if that's true and you can start to see. Now, look at this. So actual required income to buy is a share of, of, of their true income. Look at how low Windsor is. So combine that. If you think about Southwest Ontario, uh, the auto industry, you know Windsor is very intense with, with automotive plus the affordability to buy these homes, that could be a really good place to start thinking about as an investment. Uh, Sudbury as well, there's some good places in Southwest Ontario, North Ontario, that I think are, are prime uh, places to invest in real estate. So resale prices, people say, do condos go up faster than, than freehold homes? Usually it's, it's the exact opposite. Freehold homes do outperform condos in a longer term uh, price analysis. So rent versus owner, this is another affordability issue where the mortgage payment is now higher than the rental cost, whereas for the most part, if you look at just the cost of renting compared to the mortgage payment, we know there's other costs associated with home ownership, uh, maintenance and upkeep, we've got property taxes, all the rest of it. But that's something that could push people more into the rental market. Uh, affordability conditions, the average monthly payment is now higher than the maximum payment should be. So we're going to have to see some kind of change there and you can see 2012 and 2013 forecast so we're right at that that critical flux point where it switches and the other th the other dangerous thing that we're seeing is that the new household demand uh, is about 65,000 uh, people per year in Ontario, number of households, the starts have actually crept up. So they're going to have to come back down because you can't have more starts. You can't have more housing coming on the market than there is demand for it. So we're going to start to see housing starts go down. If we don't, there could be a correction there. Uh, starts to household growth, we can start to see where the areas are that, uh, that maybe are experiencing oversupply compared to the uh, the ones that are experiencing undersupply. And look at what's there, Windsor and London. Uh, actually, Windsor is the big one here, that there's actually less starts happening. So if we start to see some job growth there uh, with not a lot of housing stock, it could be a really good thing. Housing starts, obviously, just like we said, are going to moderate. Uh, modest growth is expected in, in MLS sales. So the number of sales, uh, they do expect it to go up and you can see the gray territory is really their, their um, I, I guess their range of value that they feel is going to happen and the average MLS resale price will post limited gains that's according to the CMHC to the federal government uh, I have seen reports from TD and from BMO that says that they feel like housing prices are going to come down a little bit I think we're probably looking at a percent or two either way I don't think there's going to be a lot of change but what can affect that I think the biggest influence is 
uh, is the interest rate because that has a huge effect on affordability and uh, we've talked about that in previous videos. So I hope you've enjoyed the summary, um, give you a sense of where we're at. I think for the most part we're looking at some stability. Uh, we're obviously watching the U.S. really close to see what happens and if you have any questions about any of this information, let us know. And the other thing too is that people say how's the market. It's really how's your market. It's, uh, you know, like you don't necessarily even care about what's going on in the freehold world if you have a condo. You don't care about what's going on in Toronto as much if you have a house in Milton. So it's really, these are these are across the board numbers and and what happens is, is that's not always relevant to, to what's going on in your market. So that's another final note that I'll add to this video and I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.